Thanks for joining me for another reading through the Bible in chronological order. Today we're in the book of Judges, chapter 6 and 7. The Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord handed them over to Midian seven years, and they oppressed Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people of the east came and attacked them. They encamped against them and destroyed the produce of the land even as far as Gaza. They left nothing for Israel to eat, as well as no sheep, ox, or donkey. For the Midianites came with their cattle and their tents like a great swarm of locusts. They and their camels were without number, and they entered the land to lay waste to it. So Israel became poverty-stricken because of Midian, and the Israelites cried out to the Lord. When the Israelites cried out to him because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to them, and he said to them, This is what the Lord God of Israel says, I brought you out of Egypt and out of the place of slavery. I rescued you from the power of Egypt and the power of all who oppressed you. I drove them out before you and you gave and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites whose land you live in, but you did not obey me. The angel of the Lord came, and he sat under the oak that was in Ophrah, which belonging to Joash the Abiez Abiezrite, his son Gideon was threshing wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, valiant warrior. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened? And where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? And they said, Hasn't the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and deliver Israel from the grasp of Midian. I am sending you. He said to him, Please, Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Look, my family is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's family. But I will be with you, the Lord said to him, and you will strike Midian down as if it were one man. Then he said to him, If I have found favor with you, give me a sign that you are speaking with me. Please do not leave this place until I return to you, and let me bring my gift and set it before you. And he said, I will stay until you return. So Gideon went and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread and a half bushel of flour. He placed the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat with the unleavened bread, put it on the stone, and pour the broth on it. And so he did that. The angel of the Lord extended the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire came out from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. When Gideon realized that he was the angel of the Lord, he said, Oh no, Lord God, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace to you. Don't be afraid, for you will not die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. And it is still in Orphra of the Abarazarites today. On that very night, the Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull and a second bull, seven years old, then tear down the altar of Baal that belongs to your father and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Build a well-constructed altar to the Lord your God on top of this mound. Take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah pole you cut down. So Gideon took ten of his male servants and did as the Lord had told him, but because he was too afraid of his father's family and the men of his city to do it in the daytime, he did it at night. Then the men of the city got up in the morning, and they found Baal's altar torn down, the Asherah pole beside it cut down, and the second bull offered up on the altar that had been built. And they said to each other, Who did this? And after they made a thorough investigation, they said, Gideon, son of Joash, did it. Then the men of the city said to Joash, Bring out your son, he must die because he tore down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Joash said to all who stood against him, Would you plead Baal's case for him? Would you save him? Whoever pleads his case will be put to death by morning. 
If he is a god, let him plead his own case, because someone tore down his altar. And that day Gideon was called Jerubbaal, since Joash said, Let Baal contend with him, because he tore down his altar. All the Midianites, Amalekites, and people of the east gathered together across the Jordan and camped in the Jezreel Valley. The Spirit of the Lord enveloped Gideon, and he blew the ram's horn, and the Abarizarites rallied behind him. He sent messengers throughout all of Manasseh who rallied behind him. He also sent messengers throughout Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali who also came to meet him. Then Gideon said to God, If you will deliver Israel by me as you said, I will put a wool fleece here on the threshing floor. If dew is only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, I will know that you will deliver Israel by me as you said. And that is what happened. When he got up early in the morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung dew out of it, filling a bowl with water. And Gideon then said to God, Don't be angry with me. Let me speak one more time. Please allow me to make one more test with the fleece. Let it remain dry and the dew be all over the ground. And that night God did as Gideon requested, only the fleece was dry and dew was all over the ground. Jerobal, that is Gideon, and all the troops who were with him got up early and camped beside the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them, below the hill of Morah in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many troops for me to hand the Midianites over to them, or else Israel might elevate themselves over me and say, I saved myself. Now announce, announce to the troops, whoever is fearful and trembling may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 of the troops turned back, but 10,000 remained. Then the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many troops. Take them down to the water, and I, I will test them for you there. If I say to you, This one can go with you, he can go. But if I say about anyone, This one cannot go with you, he cannot. So he brought the troops down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Separate everyone who laps water with his tongue like a dog. Do the same with everyone who kneels to drink. The number of those who laughed with their hands to their mouths was 300 men, and all the rest of the troops knelt to drink water. The Lord said to Gideon, I will deliver you with the 300 men who lapped, and hand the Midianites over to you, but everyone else is to go home. So Gideon sent all the Israelites to their tents, but kept the 300 troops who took the provisions and their ram's horns. The camp of Midian was below him in the valley. That night the Lord said to him, Get up and attack the camp, for I have handed it over to you. But if you are afraid to attack the camp, go down with Purah, your servant, listen to what they say, and then you will be encouraged to attack the camp. And so he went down with Purah, his servant, at the outpost of the troops who were in the camp. Now the Midianites, Amalekites, and all the people of the east had settled down in the valley like swarms of locusts and their camels were as innumerable as the sand on the seashore. When Gideon arrived, there was a man telling his friend about a dream. He said, Listen, I had a dream. A loaf of barley bread was tumbling into the Midianite camp, struck a tent, and it fell, and the loaf turned the tent upside down so that it collapsed. His friend answered, This is nothing less than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has handed the entire Midianite camp over to him. When Gideon heard the account of the dream and its interpretation, he bowed in worship. He returned to Israel's camp and said, Get up, for the Lord has handed the Midianite camp over to you. Then he divided the three hundred men into three companies and gave each of the men a ram's horn in one hand and an empty pitcher with a torch inside of it in the other. Watch me, he said to them, and do what I do. When I come to the outpost of the camp, do as I do. When I and everyone with me blows our ram's horns, you are also to blow your ram's horns all around the camp, and you will say, For the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men who were with him went to the post outpost of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch after the sentries had been stationed. They blew their ram's horns and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. The three companies blew their ram's horns and shattered their pitchers. Pitchers, they held their torches in their left hands and their ram's horns to blow in their right hands, and they shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Each Israelite took his position behind the camp, and the entire Midianite army began to run, and they cried out as they fled. When Gideon's men blew their 300 ram's horns, the Lord caused the men and the whole army to turn on each other with their swords. 
they fled to Acacia House in the direction of Zarara, as far as, far as the border of Abel Mahala, near Tabith. Then the men of Israel were called from Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, and they pursued the Midianites. Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim with this message. Come down to intercept the Midianites and take control of the water courses ahead of them as far as Beth Parah and the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they took control of the water courses as far as Beth Barah and the Jordan. They captured Oreb and Zaib, the two princes of Midian. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Zaib at the wine press of Zaib while they were pursuing the Midianites. And they brought the heads of Oreb and Zaib to Gideon across the Jordan. So we begin the cycle of judges. I mean, it's already begun, but here we come to a cycle that's well known or familiar with Gideon and his defeat of the Midianites. It's significant, though, I always wonder if I make too much of things, but it is significant that God intentionally makes Gideon select few, that is even 300 of the, what was it, 37,000? The, the enormous amount of people who volunteered to come and, and fight, which really was their requirement. God told them that. You are to defend your brother when you go into the land. But to make the point that these people were being delivered because of God and that God was fighting, only 300 warriors were chosen. Not even necessarily the best at warring based upon the way that they drank water, but it is significant that God only chooses 300 because God isn't powerful by numbers. The power of God's word is not powered by the number of people who share it. The power of the word, the power of anything that God provides is all wrapped up in himself. And so when I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek, that power, is God's. And when you and I are thinking and reflecting upon our need for peace and calm in this world, it's going to be because God is the all-powerful one. A lesson that Gideon and the 300 men would see as they see themselves defeat Midian. And hopefully, at least in that generation, they came to really know that the Lord was God, the true God of Israel. Join me for another reading tomorrow through the Bible in chronological order.